मिर्ची एफ एम नंबर वन इनसे है पक्का और किसके सुनिए यार हमारा एक सच्चा साथी है मिर्ची एफ एम लम्बा साठ मिर्ची एफ एम सो हॉट देखे में लाल लाल खाए में हाय हाय थैंक यू थैंक यू ताऊपा में मिर्ची एफ एम हॉट हियर एट रेड बी टाउन सिंगर टॉकर लव लिसनिंग टू मिर्ची एफ एम मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट मिर्ची एफ एम इज नंबर वन इन सुबह इट्स हॉट हम इंग्लिश लम्बा सा में रहता है तो क्या कहा बताइए हम मिर्ची एफ एम सुनता है मिर्ची एफ एम बहुत जुलू जुलू मिर्ची एफ एम इट्स हॉट Tonight, Nandi family claim they were chased out of their home. Ten million dollars issued in VT bonds, and president visits troops in Golan Heights. Good evening. I'm Jackie Spate, and this is FBC News. A family from Lavusa in Nandi claims they were chased out of their house by a landowning unit on Sunday. They allege the landowner stopped them from dismantling their house after they could no longer stay on the land. Christopher Chand reports. Fifty-five-year-old Kushma Wati was reduced to tears as she recalled how her family was allegedly chased out of their house. छोड़ी डंडा सब लेके आए ना बट वो लोग हमलोग कैसे कुछ खाली हमलोग के धमकावे ना they came with knives and sticks and threatened us to leave the house. They told us you have four hours to leave. Within this time, they wanted us to leave. We rushed to pack whatever we could. We had only a pair of change. When we came here, we didn't even have clothes to wear. What he also claims in March, they were given an ultimatum to pay $7,500 in lease payments due within two months of face eviction. She says the family doesn't have that kind of money. We just finished my husband's six months funeral rights. My only son works. How can we get that much money? They don't want to listen. They say just they don't know anything. They only want the money. If not, take your clothes and go on the road. The head of the Tokotoka Nauku, Mesulame Unge Unge, who owns the land in Lavusa, says they didn't physically chase away the family. We told them to pay for the nine years that they have been staying for free on our land. If I follow the legal way, they have to pay us for 12 years. They left. We didn't chase them. What he says they want help from authorities to dismantle the house so they can rebuild somewhere else. Police have advised the complainant to take the matter to court. Unge Unge, meanwhile, has indicated more families will be issued eviction notices. Christopher Chand, FBC News. President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau has commended the commitment of Fijian troops serving in the Golan region and for maintaining Fiji's record in peacekeeping duties. He met with Fijian soldiers serving in different outposts as he completed his two-day tour of the Golan Heights yesterday. Ratu Epeli highlighted that Fiji's history and commitment to peacekeeping has contributed to the country's good reputation in peace efforts around the world. More than 500 Fijian men and women are currently serving in the Golan Heights. Ratu Epeli also praised Fiji's leadership role in the Golan region and reminded personnel to support each other and other countries serving under the same banner. Later this week, he is expected to visit Fijian troops in Sinai. More than $10 million worth of bonds have been issued under the government's VT bond program. Mikalonga reports VT bonds are an alternative to other commercial investments. We introduced the VT bond. Administered by the Finance Ministry, VT bond is similar to term deposits, shares or units in a trust fund. In this case, the bondholder lends money to the borrower, the issuer. Um, in this case, the issuer is the government and uh, the bondholder or the investor are the general public. And um, the issuer sells a bond to raise funds and agrees to pay the bond to the holder at an, at an agreed interest rates at a fixed intervals throughout the life of the bond. A 4% interest rate applies on a five-year term, 4.5% on a seven-year term, and 5% for a 10-year bond. One of the attraction of this facility is that apart from the other um, um, term deposit on investment that normally individuals uh, invest in, they normally pay in six months. But for VT bond, interest rates will be paid on a quarterly basis. 
So we will be paying them at the end of March, June, September and December. Four years. Isikeli Bodendundua, the director of uh, debt management, you know, has assured people their investments are safe under VT bond. The Fiji government is well known for as being a credible borrower. Uh, we have never defaulted in any of our payment, any of our loan payment, whether our bilateral loan or multilateral loan. We have never defaulted in any of our loan repayment. And that should give confidence to our investors if they are willing to take a VT bond the Fiji government will pay them back as and when it matures. Interest earned from VT bonds are exempt from tax and stamp duty. It was introduced to bring in money for capital works. Mikalonga, FBC News. Parents have been urged to priori prioritise time with their children to encourage them to study and further their education. Prime Minister Rear Admiral Vrengen Bainimarama gave this message to parents and guardians at the opening of new facilities at Wunindawa District School in Naitasiri. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. The government has made strides to lift the standard of education and the Prime Minister has urged parents to best use the assistance offered to school children. We should make use of government assistance and should always encourage our children to give their best in their education. We have been saddened to hear of some children not in school during school hours. It is therefore important that we all play our part in the education of our children. The Prime Minister reiterated that government assistance will cover primary and secondary school levels and there are plans to assist students at tertiary levels should they attain the mark required. To all children, do not be pessimistic and lose hope in all you strive to achieve. This is your time. Step forward and give your utmost best in achieving the highest you can in your education. Do not be drawn away from your dreams with talks of Itoke students not being academically bright. Utilize government assistance for education and go to the highest level you can get in your education. The students warmly welcomed changes to their school environment. I like my new classroom. I'm happy for my new classroom. I like my new classroom because it's nice to me. The Prime Minister urged the students to make the most of the new facilities and to work hard in achieving the best they could in education. Vasita Kote Wasawasa, FBC News. After the break, Water Utility plans future upgrades. Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lampasa. It's not! My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. Uh, listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks in Suba. A lot of us in the love today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vuniva Lampasa. Yeah, it rocks! I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Bulan dua saya betul FM, enam bandua rakyat rakyat. Bulan FM enam bandua inosor. Gua etah buat ke buat aku lepas am bulan FM na. Bulan FM enam bandua korbu. Bulan FM enam bandua esawa. Bulan FM enam bandua lotokam. Bulan enam bandua enam bulan FM memba. Bulan FM enam bandua enosor in Singapore. Welcome back, this is FBC News. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center based in Hawaii will stop issuing warnings from October 1st. It has instead introduced product or advisory bulletins like wave forecasts, threat maps, and expected arrival time of waves available in each Pacific nation. Akusita Tale reports. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center has always been at the forefront when it comes to warnings and alerts. Now, however, local tsunami warning authorities all over the Pacific have been given that responsibility. What we hope is that we will uh, achieve uh, a reduction in overwarning, and as well as to emphasize that the uh, national authority uh, for each country is responsible for issuing warnings uh, for their country. Over the years, Fiji and other parts of the Pacific have continued to receive alerts despite the tsunami occurring miles away. Fiji's Tsunami Warning Authority is the Mineral Resources Department. It will analyze the information fed by the Pacific Center and decide whether an alert needs to be issued. Uh, they will issue uh, 
uh, a warning for a certain number of countries within the periphery of the of the tsunami, the the earthquake event. And then once it's a confirmed tsunami, then they will issue what we call a Pacific wide warning. So irrespective of whether the thrust of the wave is coming towards you or not, you are still warned. So you can say there's a degree of overwarning. This does mean all tsunami warning centers will have to be meant on a 24-hour basis to avoid any catastrophes. Public, if the national warning center is not able to grasp that information, the advisory products and on time and issue warning, then the public will be affected. But if the warning center is really prompt, 24 hours you know, operation, able to really get that information and then promptly convert it in assess the threat and then convert into a warning or watch a bulletin, then the public will not lose that much. The new method of tsunami alerts will mean information will be more accurate and directed to specific locations rather than issuing general warnings for the entire Pacific region. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Water Authority of Fiji says its $71 million government allocation is being put to good use and reaching more people this year. Shireen Lata reports. The Water Authority of Fiji has carried out more capital works than ever before and Chief Executive Officer Opetaya Ravai says government funding has gone a long way in improving supply. This is, I think, the first time this uh, water utility has gotten this amount of money and uh, we hope this trend continues because the real beneficiaries are the people. Eh? We need to uh, good, efficient water systems for our people and increase the accessibility of these systems. Without uh, support from uh, any government for that matter, it's going to be very difficult. The water utility has been carrying out upgrades and repairs on 60-year-old pipes and networks all over the country. So these upgrades will continue. We had mentioned uh, previously that uh, during the Waila upgrade, that there will be uh, continuous upgrades because we are improving our infrastructure and we need to um, do these uh, shutdowns or these uh, works and temporarily supply will be disrupted to our customers. The authority is working with relevant bodies to identify areas which need attention. Right now the focus is on the 48-hour water cut in Nendi and Lautoka to allow repairs in high-pressure pipes. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Grand Pacific Hotel in Suva is hoping to set a sweet world record when it celebrates its 100th anniversary tomorrow. Rashika Kumar caught up with the pastry chef and filed this report. The GPH has baked a 350-meter-long Swiss roll, often called a jam roll in Fiji. The current record for a giant Swiss roll is one made in Japan that stretched a mere 130 meters. We're trying to do the longest uh, Swiss roll in the world, which will be placed at the parking of the GPH, at the front of the GPH. And uh, there will be a ceremony, of course, a handover of the key, and we will cut the cake uh, in the presence of personalities. According to executive pastry chef Peter Gruben, over 2,000 eggs and more than 200 kg of flour and sugar were used to produce the cake. He also added that local vanilla pods were used in the recipe. About 20 staff had been working on the cake for over a week to get it ready to be cut by the Prime Minister tomorrow. General Manager Eugene Atham has invited the entire population of the country to be part of this record-setting function. This will also be the first time the guest and media will be given a tour of Suva's Grand Lady. The function will be, as I said, a great day. After 22 years having closed the hotel, it is fun for us all to see how now the hotel looks like and that we all have great pleasure to work in this beautiful hotel. Tomorrow's guests will be treated with Fijian coffee, Fiji water and soft drinks, a chance to win a return trip to Sydney and of course, they will eat cake. Inside the kitchen right now, there are about 20 chefs whisking, baking and cutting away, all to set a new world record. Tomorrow we get to see Rashka Kumar, FPC News. Police are looking for a 21-year-old journalism student who's been missing since the 2nd of April. Alisi Nailolo of Nawanawa and Nasinu left for a field trip to Dumba and did not return. 
Her family reported the matter to the police last Friday. Alisi is of dark complexion and 150 centimeters tall. Also missing is Rusila Tinai, a 16-year-old Form 4 student of Muslim League who left home last Saturday and hasn't returned. Rusila was last seen in a grey pullover and black shorts. She is of dark complexion with curly hair and of slim build. Police have recorded an increase in minor thefts. For instance, a primary school teacher had her laptop and handbag stolen from a classroom. Meanwhile, a farmer in Navo had items stolen from his car, while another Navo resident had a washing machine and clothes stolen. The police force is urging people to properly secure their property to keep them from thieves. We turn to sports now, and here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Jackie. Coming up, Fiji football's under-19 side call for the nation's support and former national rep donates the secondary school sevens but wishes to remain anonymous. Find out more after the break. It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lotoka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Bang. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lotoka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bato Bahe, Bame Radio Fiji 2 ke konsa ke roke, all line clear. Radio Fiji 2, raki raki ke log jada sunte hai. Nendi mein hum sab ki pasand Radio Fiji 2. Pahle wu ke log Radio Fiji 2 sab se jada sun rahe hai. Meri pasand Radio Fiji 2, Masuri mein sabhi ko pasand Radio Fiji 2. Tawa mein Radio Fiji 2 sabhi ko sunte hai. Radio Fiji 2 rock. Radio Fiji 2, I love you. Desh ki dharkan, Radio Fiji 2. Welcome back to FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji football side is calling on all fans to play the role of 12th man at the Under-19 Championships. When the competition starts tomorrow in Suva, hopes are that fans will pack the Laudala venue and cheer Fiji on to qualify for its first World Cup competition. Interesting has more. Preparing to shine and to achieve this, the Fiji Under-19s are calling on the fans of the nation to back them. Well, uh, all the fans, we need all the fans to support us, our families, they yeah, will come out numbers and support the team. The main thing, we need support from the fans of Fiji. With a new dawn approaching, it will be left to the championships to create history, something which can be achieved through the support in the stands. I would say we have done our part, the boys have done their part in the preparations. Now it comes to the fans, to the Fijians now, who are around in the southern area, around Suva area, come out in numbers and support the young brigade. They are just 17, 18, 19 year old boys and they need a lot of support. The pleasantries to be exchanged on the field are something which can be drowned out if the Fijian fans follow their hearts. Uh, I say that for a long, long time. Um, the, the people from South is the first time in a long, long time in many years they had the opportunity to see. Don't miss this opportunity. Um, when I, I look in a rugby, it just is the amount of people that come in colors and singing and shouting, and, and that's what we need. The, 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 the people in the grandstand is the 12th player for us. For the skipper, he is in the second year of captaincy, meaning he will have added responsibilities on his shoulders. Well, the boys are now the focus for tomorrow's game. But firstly, I'd like to thank our government you know, for giving this opportunity to the boys. And uh, it's a wonderful time with the boys we have met together. We played uh, together, we played together, but the boys are ready now, they focus for this tournament. The new dawn tomorrow will bring with it game day. Game day, which could be the start of a historical journey for these Fiji juniors. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji Sports Commission today contributed $50,000 to Fiji's campaign at the OFC Under-19 Championships. The money was given to the Fiji Football Association to assist their effort to qualify for the World Cup. This was also a historic occasion for the Fiji FA, as this is the first time such a grant has been given to the sport. The school activities are taking place, our youth activities are taking place. So we are very, very thankful to the uh, National Sports Commission and of course the government uh, for funding this and as Peter has said, this is the first time that uh, we are getting such a uh, handsome uh, uh, grant from uh, government and definitely we will put it to best use. 
The Solomon Islands has been regarded as one of the top favorites for the Oceania Under-19 playoffs and will bank on experience in the squad to carry them through to the Under-20 World Cup next year. Coach and former Nandi and Navua striker Comins Benapi is looking forward to his team achieving this when the tournament starts tomorrow. Praveen Narayan has more. The journey for the Solomon Island to the Under-20 World Cup begins tomorrow. Although the side is mentally and physically ready, it is aware and wary of the style of Fijian plays after playing Nandi in a warm-up match. It's a very physical game. And before the game, uh, I told the boys that it will be a physical game as all the Fijian players, they would come out and give everything. And that's what we expected in the game against Nike And uh, you must be expecting the same thing against uh, other teams from tomorrow? Yes, like Fiji. I think like Fiji, they, they will play the same game as where we expect against Nike. So we're looking for that game. The team believes months of hard work and plus commitment are the winning strategy. Um, the preparation is very good. Uh, we prepared very well. Uh, for the last three months, we come together and we prepared well. And most of most of the our players they play in the top league in Solomon Island. So yeah, we prepared well. For this. New Zealand-based little striker Kevin Odbed will be one of the weapons whom the coach will be using against the opponents. I always score goals like I will try my best to score goals against Fiji. Those teams like yeah, but I always score a lot of goals. The clash between the Solomon Island and Papua New Guinea side kicks off at 7.30 p.m. at ANZ Stadium in Suva. Praveen Narayan, FBC Sports. And you can watch games live on FBC TV tomorrow afternoon. At 2.30, Fiji takes on American Samoa, while Solomon Islands play PNG at 7.30. Good news for the Fiji Secondary School Sevens Rugby Competition this weekend. A good Samaritan donated much-needed funds to help run the one-day tournament. Charlie Ndaudakadaka with the story. Organizers of the National Secondary School Sevens Competition can breathe a sigh of relief after a $5,000 boost for the tournament. First, I must uh, wish to commend the, one of the sponsors who wishes to remain anonymous for being the sponsor. He was an ex-secondary uh, school rep that did participate in the secondary school sevens. He did represent Fiji and now he wants to give back to secondary schools for what they have done. 45 schools have confirmed their participation. Among them is Bunisea Secondary School, which is a pleasing sign to the union. One of our biggest uh, priority areas this year for secondary schools is to try and strengthen our tier two schools competition which looks after the Wanulevo schools and also the maritime schools. So that's where we want to prioritize some of our efforts to strengthen the Tier 2 competition. Eh? National selectors will be at the ground to scout players for the upcoming Youth Olympic Games. It is a great opportunity to witness raw talent that can fly the Fiji flag, not only in China, but in years to come. Silent Dothakadak, FBC Sports. Congratulations to local surfer Issei Tokovo, who is Fiji's wildcard entry for next month's ASP Tour Fiji Pro in Tavarua. He outscored last year's wildcard Ada Lalambalavu and Inia Naka Levo at Cloudbreak yesterday to get a chance to roll with the world's best. This will be Tokovo's second appearance in the world event. His first outing was in 2012, where he bowed out in the preliminary stage to current Volcom Fiji Pro champion Kelly Slater of the United States. The men's Fiji Pro will begin on the 1st of June. And that was your sports for tonight. Good evening. The Fiji Roads Authority says they would like nothing else but to raise the standard of contractors in Fiji and ensure the work being delivered is of good quality. Authority Maintenance Works Manager Dale Nichols says there are high standards to be met and the FRA will settle for nothing less. The authority has expressed its desire to help local contractors secure contracts. However, those contractors must also meet a few standards first before any work is approved. You know, what that will mean is that there will be times when we are not able to accept materials or work that's been delivered because it doesn't meet the standard and we're working with the local contractor so that they understand the importance of, of meeting the specification. Nichols says if contractors deliver quality up to the stand, up quality standards then this will mean Fiji benefits by getting long life out of the projects.
And it's time for the weather with Trish. Well, Jackie, looking at today's map, Suunani Lotokan by cloudy skies from the morning till the afternoon, along with a few occasional scattered showers. Sabu Sabu and Lambasa had fine weather all throughout the day. The temperatures in Suva and Nandi were the lowest at 26, Lotoka 27, whereas Bai and Savu hit 28, and Lambasa topped them all with 32. Tonight, very, very cool again like last night. The coolest will be Tavua, Mba and Rakiraki, down to 16, and the rest of the centers between 17 to 20. Tomorrow's forecast, we have Suva and Savu Savu with the usual cloudy skies and occasional showers throughout the day. Nadi Lotokamba and Lambasa should have fine weather all day. The further outlook, southeast winds 10 to 15 knots and moderate southerly swells. Now let's look at our photo of the day. This wonder shot was taken yesterday morning over W level in, um, no sorry, and sent in by Lemeki Lenoa. Thanks Lemeki. Thanks so much for that, Trish. The headlines, once again, Nandi family claim they were chased out of their home. $10 million issued in VT bonds and president visits troops in Golan Heights. To our poll question now, we're asking, should tollways be introduced on the roads? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's FBC News tonight. We'll be back tomorrow evening. Until then, from the team and I, Nimo de Manda. Et tali tak ne radio Fiji One ne mo rane nota kono. Et tali tak ano borro ngone radio Fiji One singa toka mbolete ni station ni alumatu. Et radio Fiji One ne station ni alumatu ilo toka. Et tali tak ano borro ngone radio Fiji One ne mandi ni station ni alumatu. Et tuli koi korvo. Et tuli borro mo live na station ni alumatu na radio Fiji One. Et tuli borro ngone radio Fiji One na station ni alumatu na mandoi tilim. Na radio Fiji One na tuli mo ibitin bonga ni bienai.